Hello dear students, welcome back. This is Jocelyn A.R. Today I will continue poem Lock in War. Let us, before moving, let us uh, make a quick review of what we learned in the first part. So, Lock in War traveled alone without any weapons and company to England because he wanted to save his lover from a forced marriage. He was in love with a lady, a girl called Helen and Helen was getting married to someone else. She had agreed to marry because she was pressurized by her parents to get married to someone else. When Ellen, I mean Lockinwar received this message, that is, uh, you know, that uh, is a lover was forcibly getting married to someone. He decides to save her and elope with her from the marriage hall. Okay, so he started his journey on the same day when the marriage was, uh, you know, was in progress. Okay, so Ellen was getting married to a man unwillingly in a place called Netherby. So, you know, there was, there, there was, there was, an, I mean, you know very well that uh, Netherby was the marriage hall where Ellen's marriage was arranged. So, Lockinwar comes, you know, he, he, he came alone to Netherby without any weapons and company because he did not want to create any violence. Okay. Uh, though he was a great warrior, he was a knight. Though he was, I mean, he had taken part in many successful battles. He was, a, he was known for his valor, his strength, power. But still, he did not want to create any violence. So he tactfully enters the Netherby Hall and uh, successfully, you know, elopes with uh, Ellen. In the first part, we came to know how. El, you know, he travels from uh, his homeland, Scotland, and as soon as he entered into the marriage hall, Netherby Hall, he was stopped by the bride's father, Ellen's father. Ellen's father asked him, taking the sword in his hand. As soon as Lockinwar was, you know, in the was seen in the Netherby Hall, Lock, I mean, Ellen's father removed sword. He took sword in his hand and asked whether. Lockinwar had come there to cause trouble or to attend the marriage. And Lockinwar very tactfully confused Ellen's father by first reminding the fact that he has no feelings of love on Ellen. Earlier, he had a great love and he compared his love to the uh, tides of Solway River. Okay, he, he, I mean, he, he reminded uh, Ellen's father that he had such feelings earlier but now the feelings have ebbed back. Ebbed means disappeared, died out. And he, and he confused by telling that he had just come to see his lover last time, ex-lover last time and you know, one, one, I mean, for the last time and drink and dance. Okay, he also confused by telling that there were maidens in Scotland more beautiful than Ellen who were ready to become his bride. Okay, see what happens after this. We have completed four stanzas, still four stanzas remain. This is a ballad, I told you. And the uniqueness of this ballad is that a lot of inversions are used. Plus every last word of the stanza is a lock in war, the title. Okay, let us move on. The bride kissed the goblet, the knight took it up. He quaffed off the wine and he threw down the cup. She looked down to blush and she looked up to sigh with a smile on her lips and a tear in her eye. He took a soft and ear her mother could bar. Now treadway measure, said Ang Lockinwar. So when Lockinwar was seen in the hall, you know the reaction of the uh, of, of Ellen's father. So all these things were being observed by Ellen. 
So when Ellen saw Lochinvar in the hall, she was quite sure that he had come there to take her away. She was very sure. And in order to get confirmation of her feeling, she just, you know, took a wine glass. Goblet means, see, the bride kisses the goblet. Goblet means wine glass. She took a wine glass. She kissed it and put it back. Lochinvar went towards her and took the same glass which she had kissed and he quaffed off. Quaffed off means drank quickly the wine. He quaffed off the wine and after drinking quickly, he threw the cup down. Thus, he gave a very clear signal that he in fact had come there not to attend the wedding but to take her away. See how she reacted. She looked down to blush. She felt extreme, extremely shy, you know. She felt shy and she looked up to sigh. She was relaxed. She took a long breath. Sigh means take a long breath. She was extremely relieved, relaxed because she was forced to marry someone else by her parents and her, lady, I mean, her, her brothers. Okay, she was not, uh, you know, uh, interested to marry a laggard and a dastard because she loved someone who was extremely faithful and fearless. Lock in war. Okay, so she felt shy and she was of course extremely happy she was relaxed with a smile on her lips and tear in her eyes she was extremely tears you know came out of her eyes because she was happy not sad and moreover she was seeing lock in war after a long time all right see he took a soft hand ear ear i told you in the previous part that ear is uh, ear means before it's an archaic word old english word which is no longer in use here means before before her mother could bar bar means stop she was standing with her mother he went straight towards her, first drank the wine, uh, wine which she had, you know, she drank, he drank the wine from the glass which she had kissed and immediately he took her soft hand and, and said, now tread way measure, measure means a, a stately dance, a dance of two couple in fact, a dance of couple. He took her authoritatively and said, shall we dance? Actually, he did not even invite, he just took her soft hand and started dancing with her before Ellen's mother could stop. Alright, let's move on. So stately his form and so lovely her face that never a hall such a gallier did grace. While her mother did fret and her father did fume and the bridegroom stood dangling his bonnet and plume and the bride maidens whispered it were better by far to have matched our fair cousin with young lock in war. He took her and started dancing. And I told you in the previous part that Christian marriages are known for dance and drink. You can see number of couples dancing in the hall, marriage hall. Among them even he too, started, he, he too was dancing with Ellen. And they made the best to pair there. See the first line, so stately his form, so lovely her face. He was stately, he was extremely handsome. His handsomeness and her beauty matched as a result they made the best pair. Among Many couples dancing, they were the best. Got it? See, so stately his form and so lovely her face that never a hall such a gallier. Gallier means a dance of two, in fact. You know, I told you that number of couples were dancing. Among them, they made the best pair because of his handsomeness, his stately form and her lovely face, her beauty. Okay, while her mother did fret. So when this was going on, mother was anxious. Fret means anxious. Father was anger. I mean, he was father did fume. He was in great anger. Mother was anxious, father was angry. See the bridegroom and the bridegroom stood dangling his bonnet and plume. Bonnet means hat, plume means feather. In Christian marriages, you know, bridegrooms, they wear a long hat. Hat, in fact, with some feathers on it. He did not show any reaction when, uh, uh, you know, uh, his bride was taken by Lochinvar. When Lochinvar, uh, you know, uh, took the soft hand of uh, Helen, father was angry. Mother was anxious. She, she knew that something was going to happen. But bridegroom was a coward. He did not show any reaction. Okay, he was just dangling. He was playing with the hat and the feather. Putting the hat down, he was playing with the feather. Alright. And see what the bride maidens. Bride maidens means the relatives of uh, Ellen. Especially those who are unmarried girls. Okay. The bride maidens whispered. They whispered means talk in a low tone. What the whisper do you see? It were better by far to have matched our fair cousin with young Lokinwar. They were discussing over them. It would, have, it, would have been bet, it would have been better that our cousin Ellen married Lokinwar rather than that, uh, that dastard. 
bridegroom because he was so stately in his form so handsome and brave and so all the bride bands they were discussing among themselves they were whispering among themselves it would have been better that our cousin ellen married lockinwar rather than that bridegroom all right so what happens let's move on one touch to her hand and one word in her ear when they reached the hall door and the charger stood near so light to the croup the fair lady is swung so light to the saddle before her is sprung she is one we are gone or bank bush and scorp they will have fleet steeds that follow koth yang lokinwar so lokinwar had come with pre intention his intention was to elope save ellen and his intention was to leave with her okay so while dancing he brought her very i mean towards the hall door hall door means entrance and as soon as they reached the entrance he touched her hand and gave a signal he told something in her ear something in the sense he made very clear that he, he told her to be ready for for escape before that he made his charger stand ready at the door charger means horse here at the point you see see the second line uh, when they reached the hall door and the charger stood near he had already given command to his charger horse to be ready at the hall door you know uh, the knights had trained their horses in such a way that horses their horses understood every command they gave so this knight lockinwar had already given command to his uh, uh, horse to be ready so it was ready at the door so as soon as they reached the hall door he gave he just touched her hand and giving signal you know he just gave a signal and told something and uh, immediately as soon as they reached the hall door he lifted her lightly and put her on the croup croup means the back of the horse you can see on the screen he put her on the croup and he also jumped and sat on the saddle before her saddle means that leather seat on which the riders sit while riding he sat on the saddle and behind him she sat on the croup and see what he said she is one he declared openly to all that she is one she is one since they have one he won in taking her away openly declared to the, to all the members present there see the daring of uh, lockinwar alone he came from scotland and in the midst of the relatives and uh, you know cousins and uh, you know um, uh, you know friends of uh, ellen and ellen's family he successfully takes her away so he declares it openly she is one he he declares it say see the reflection she is one he openly declares she is one in the sense they have i mean he has one he declared that he has one in taking her away and see what is tell what is said to uh, ellen we are gone or bank bush and scor scor means steep rocks he told her to hold him tightly because now they are going to move fast okay move over the banks bushes and scorps so he told her to hold him tightly because see what is see the last thing they will have feet fleet steeds steed means horse he told her that ellen's father and her relatives would definitely follow with the you know horses they would chase them okay see this is last last, last tanja there was mounting among grammies of the netherby clan forsters fenwicks and musgraves they rode and they ran there was racing and chasing and canobie lee but the lost bride of netherby never did they see so daring in love and so dauntless in war have you ever heard of gallant like anglock in war lock in war told you know ellen to be alert because our father brothers and relatives would follow them it happened okay see there was mounting among gram grammies forsters fenwicks and musgraves grammies forsters fenwicks and musgraves are the associate relatives of uh, uh, netherby clan that is uh, ellen's uh, uh, family there were relatives of ellen's family along with ellen's father and brothers these four families chased ellen and lockinwar but unfortunately there was see there was racing and chasing like how you see in the movies racing bike racing and car racing like that there was racing of horses in a place called canobili canobili was 5 kilometers away from 
uh, in fact this five note away from Netherby Hall there was chasing and racing in Canobili but author says the lost bride of Netherby never did the see though many horses chased Lockin War they could not find him and the lost bride Ellen in this way Lockin War successfully takes his lover away and thereafter they live happily for many years so author ends in this way so daring in love and so dauntless in war have you ever heard of gallant like young lock in war he was extremely gallant brave author say, author is asking us have you ever heard such a i mean uh, uh, such a, have you ever heard about uh, uh, a, a knight like this man of course every soldier used to be very brave even now the soldiers are the real heroes of any nation got the point your students so author calls him faithful in love and dauntless in war in this way sir walter scott describes the successful love story of a brave knight of his homeland scotland got the point your students so through this poem one should learn one should derive a message that faithfulness being faithful is very important in any relationship okay being faithful is extremely important okay if your only faithfulness okay defines the success of any relationship got it so be faithful in love and be dauntless in war okay so please go through this poem once again okay this poem is beautiful in many ways see first of all it has eight stanzas and each stanza contains six lines and every stanza has three couplets and every stanza ends with the word lock in war and inversions are used here okay inversions are used okay and um, you know when we, we, we in fact you have come to know that christian marriages are known for dance and drink but of course in 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 the cities where we live especially in india indians say in indian uh, you know uh, in india especially we will not find uh, everywhere christian marriages uh, uh, where dances and uh, drinks are common but in england and scotland and, and many european countries almost all christian countries when it comes to marriage obviously you will find a dance and you know you can see wine and other drinks served abundantly all right dear students so please go through this poem if you have any doubts you please post questions in the comment box or you can call me directly this is my personal phone number okay please stay home don't go out take care of your health stay home Stay safe. I'll be back soon.